Hello everyone, so in this lesson we're going to look at reaction number 6. So if we look at reaction number 6 on our diagram, we can see that it goes from an alkene to an alkane. If we look more specifically, we see that that is an addition reaction called hydrogenation. And then we need to use a catalyst. Now you can either use platinum, nickel, or palladium. You don't need to use all three. They then add a few extra things here which tell us that we need to dissolve the alkene in a non-polar solvent. If I was you, I would just try to remember that for the exams. They typically aren't going to really target that in the exams, but just remember that it's there. But the more important part is that you remember the catalyst, and even more important is that you, rem is that you know how the reaction works. That's the part I'm really going to focus on. Okay, so let's take a look. We're going to start with an alkene, and we're going to turn it into an alkane using a catalyst. Okay guys, so these reactions are very, very logical. Think about this, we're trying to form an alkane, which is something that has single bonds. So what are we going to have to do to this molecule over here, so that we only have single bonds? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to have to add a hydrogen over there, and a hydrogen over there. Because what that causes to happen is that this single bond can then break. So, we're going to have to react this molecule with hydrogen. So here we go. And then remember, we need to use a platinum, palladium, or nickel catalyst. I'm just going to use a platinum catalyst. And so then it's fairly easy to see what's going to happen. We said one of the hydrogens will go to the one carbon and the other one will go to the, the other carbon. They're not going to go to any of these carbons because those carbons are already saturated, meaning that they can't take any more bonds. But what happens is that this single bond, I mean this double bond, can break and then it causes an attachment point over there and an attachment point over there. And so your product is the following. And so you can see that we've added those two hydrogens onto the molecule. And so there won't be any other product because you're taking these two and you're adding them onto the original molecule. And so this is a form of addition. Addition is always two molecules added together and then the, th the in the answer, you're only going to have one molecule. It's only with elimination and substitution where you will have two molecules in your answer. And then just another thing, notice how I always draw this as a zigzag. That's just my drawing program. Your teacher is probably going to do this. I have mentioned this before, but I just felt that I needed to mention it again, so none of you panic. I know your teacher probably does it like that. I also do it like that. But it would just take forever to do it like that. And my, the drawing program I use does it in a zigzag fashion. Okay, so don't stress about that. So let's go on to reaction number seven. So reaction seven is when you take an alkane and you turn it into an alkene. In industry, they call this cracking. Now, there are two main ways that this can be done, and this is just theory you might be asked in the exam. I highly doubt it. But just for your own information, you could either do this like this. And so there's the quick little summary. You get two types. You get thermal cracking and you get catalytic cracking. Thermal should make you think of temperature. I don't know. I somehow see the word temperature there or thermometer or something like that. So that's high temperature, high pressure, but we don't use a catalyst. Then you get catalytic. Now, I don't know about you, but I see the word catalyst over there. I'm sure I'm not the only one that sees that. So uh, That one uses low temperature, low pressure, but does use a catalyst. So they are opposites of each other. They're not gonna ex they, they don't have like different ways of examining this, and you don't have to know the two different types and how they work. You just need to know that there are two different types, and I'm going to show you how the reaction actually works. That's what's important. So here we go. So we're going to take an alkane and we're going to turn it into an alkene. So we obviously need to start off with an alkane. And then in real life, depending on whether they're doing thermal or catalytic, they would either heat it up, increase the pressure, or they would keep the pressure and temperature low, but they would add a catalyst. Now what they're going to do, and the reason they do this in real life, is when they are out on the oil rigs busy drilling for oil, that oil is typically going to be in the form of hydrocarbons. Remember hydrocarbons consisting of only hydrogen and carbon, like these guys. But many of them are extremely long, okay, so you can imagine having like super, super long chains, and in the in industry, the chains that are shorter are are more applicable or more useful, okay, for petrol and cars or 
in vari for various different appliances. The shorter chain ones are a lot more useful. Okay, so what do we do then? We take we find a long chain when we do oil drilling in, under the ocean. Then what do we got to do? We're literally going to crack this molecule and we're going to break it into smaller parts. That is what cracking is. So for example, we might be able to take some scissors and cut this molecule over there. So let's pretend we're doing that. And so we literally end up with two halves like this. Now we have a bit of a problem guys because each of or some of these carbons are unstable meaning that it's got one two three carbons I mean three bonds so is this one so that can it's got one two three so something needs to happen now there are two possibilities that could take place or there's more than two but the main ideas you need to understand are the following this one over here for example might walk up to this one and say hey buddy I really, really, really want to be a double bond molecule. Could I please hand over some of my baggage to you and then and then I'll be on my way? And then this guy's like, yo, well, that'll be cool. I get to be a alkane. So yo, give me one of your hydrogens and we can, then we have ourselves a deal. So what then takes place is the following. This hydrogen over here can go ahead over here and attach itself over there. And so what we then have is the following. And so this molecule is then happy because this carbon now has four bonds. All that we need to do with this one is just put a double bond there now and everything is perfect. So look at that guys. We went from an alkane which was in the beginning and we turned it into a alkane plus an alkene. The number of hydrogens and carbons is still the same. Here we had one, two, three, four, five carbons. And in the product we've got one, two, three, whoop three, four, five. And then the number of hydrogens is still the same because all that happened was that this hydrogen simply left this molecule and joined this molecule. So here it is over here. So that's one of the options that could have happened. The other one would have been the following. So we still would have broken this molecule over here. Then this guy would say, hey buddy, is it okay with you if I give you one of my hydrogens because I'm really wanting to become an alkene? And let's say that this guy over here, he's super grumpy and he's like, no, I don't want your hydrogen. Why must I take your baggage? In fact, I was actually trying to become an alkene myself. And so what they then decide to do is they come up with quite a clever plan. This guy, he says, okay, fine, I'm going to dump this hydrogen somewhere. And then this guy, he says, I'm going to either dump this hydrogen or this hydrogen. Now, guys, in the test, you don't need to know which one. Because now look what would happen if this happens. Let's, let's say that this, this hydrogen gets dumped. And so what we can see is that this hydrogen has been eliminated. See, it used to be over there. And then this hydrogen over here, which used to be here, has disappeared. Now, obviously, they haven't disappeared. Those two hydrogens are going to shoot off, one of them over here and the other one over here. And they're going to find each other and turn into the diatomic molecule that we know, hydrogen. Okay, so that will be one of our products. Now we've got a bit of an instability problem over here because this carbon and this carbon are both surrounded by three bonds and so to fix that we create a double bond and then this carbon is perfectly fine but the other two carbons are only surrounded by three bonds and so we create a double bond. So what we did is we have now taken a long chain alkane which had five carbons and we broke that into two smaller alkenes one of them has two carbons and the other one has three carbons. So in summary, you can take an alkane, you can crack it, and you can form the following. So what we looked at was the possibility of starting with an alkane and forming an alkene plus an alkane. That was the one where the one person or the one molecule gave its hydrogen to the other one. But then in number two, both of them wanted to give away their hydrogen, and so they both turned into alkenes, and then the two hydrogens that were given off, they found each other and formed the diatomic molecule, hydrogen. So guys, that's the end of reaction number seven. Thank you for watching.